two, one. Today we are going to talk about the caning of Charles Sumner. In the middle of the 1800s, hundreds, Kansas is up for whether or not it's going to be a slave or free state. Charles Sumner is a senator from Massachusetts and an anti-slavery <laughs> radical. And Charles Sumner gives a speech on the Senate floor entitled The Crime Against Kansas. He basically says, Kansas is being assaulted by the perpetrators of slavery who want to be a slave state. Then he starts making personal attacks. He says, Oh, Andrew Butler, senator from North Carolina, who normally sits next, next to me. But oh, oh, you had a stroke. You are not here. Guess what? You are a gangster <laughs> institution of slavery. But you know who else is in the chamber that day? Preston Brooks, representative of South Carolina. Andrew Butler's second cousin. He's like, this dude is slandering my state, he's slandering my family, and the Southern Code of Honor says I can't just let this stuff transpire. What am I gonna do? What do you think? A duel would be most just. <laughs> Lawrence Keats, representative of South Carolina, Brooks' friend in the House of Representatives, a notorious fan of succession and violence in the legislature. No, you can't challenge Sumner to a duel. Only gentlemen are allowed to duel, and Charles Sumner, sir, is no gentleman. Oh, crud, you're right. What am I going to do then? Oh, I know. I was just given a brand new 11 and a half ounce gutta percha cane with a gold head. I'll beat him with that. May 22nd, 1856, Brooks walks down the aisle of the Senate. He's five dang feet from Charles Sumner, and he looks up and realizes there's a lady in the chamber. He's like, Oh, curse if I can't beat Charles Sumner in front of a lady. So he sits across the aisle and thinks about what he's doing. Then he gets up to leave. He's like, No, I'm not doing this thing. And then everyone else with him is just like, No, you got to do the thing. So Brooks walks back into the chamber and heads to Charles Sumner's desk. Ah, oh, I'm near, near sighted. It's all blurry and stuff. Who is that? Brooks is like, I read your speech twice, and guess what? It is a cursed libel against South Carolina, and it's a, a libel against Andrew Butler. And guess what? Andrew Butler is a cousin of mine. Ah. And whack. Brooks beats Sumner so hard on top of the head that he goes blind. No, let somebody. <laughs> All told, Brooks beat Sumner over the head 30 doggone times with his cane. Brooks' his cane is broken, and Charles Sumner is bloody and beaten. But he doesn't die. The North is like, what, what the heck? heck? But the South is like, yeah. Yes, how we doing, boys? <laughs> Preston Brooks is the immediate celebrity. Charles merchants buy him a cane, inscribe the words, Hit him again, and he's like, Yeah, I was defending my state. Deal with it. Sumner can come get caned again. <laughs> <laughs> now it is about 1858. Sumner is still so messed up that he can't walk. He meets Dr. Brown's Saquard, whose lights fire cotton on Sumner's back, and every time Sumner's like, Oh. Every bit of anguish, every bit of pain that I feel. I will return the perpetrators of slavery 10,000 times. Darn slavery. And in 1860, he finally gets to give a speech on the floor of the Senate after he returns, called the Barbism of Slavery, in which he says, Southerners say they own the man. They say they own the moon. They say they own the stars. But don't let them say they own a man. Because when the sun and moon and stars have died, a man's soul will live on forever. The caning of Charles Sumner was a sign of the times. It was showing that the people were ready to do anything to defend their point of view, even if it meant a beating. This event was one of many that ultimately, ultimately led to the Civil War. Let us never forget what they were willing to do to preserve their way of life and never repeat it again.